Police forces are being urged to take reports of online grooming more seriously after the mother of a teenage murder victim's concerns were ignored. Lauren Lefebvre's son, Breck Bedner, was killed by Lewis Danes last year. She called the police to warn them about the 18-year-old, but Surrey police failed to investigate her concerns. Here's part of that call. Good evening, Surrey police. How can I help? Um, yes, I have a 14-year-old son, and there's an 18-year-old unknown, well, he says he's an 18-year-old person, and I, I feel like he's being groomed. Um, he's being He's being turned against his family and schooling, and and it's been ongoing for a while, and I'm getting really concerned that this person isn't actually who he says he is. Today, a report by the Independent Police Complaints Commission found the call handler and their supervisor lacked knowledge of dealing with grooming concerns. I think this is a very serious issue. There were very fundamental failings here. And I would hope not just Surrey, but other police forces take note of our recommendations and indeed make sure that this doesn't happen again as far as we're able to. Lauren joins me now. Do you think, even though you've got that police watchdog backing you, that this could happen again to somebody else, to another family? <laughs> Absolutely. I think um, there's so much that's unknown about grooming. The fact that Breck was a boy, I think it wasn't taken as seriously ha ha had it been a girl. And I think, you know, the amount of times I mentioned grooming in my call, six times, and three times I, told, I was told police intelligence would look into the person. At that stage, did you believe what you were being told, that you had these grave concerns and that somebody would investigate those concerns? I totally believed that he would be investigated because I knew his name. I knew an alias that he used as well. I knew his age. I knew approximately when he was born. But I also um, had the county where he said he was from. And I had all of the, you know, sort of tale, tall tales he had said about giving 200, 2 million uh, pounds to the Syrian rebels. And I had told them about that. I had told them that he was teaching the boys about computing and I was worried about hacking. And at times of, you know, our terrorism worries, I can't believe that they didn't uh, even look into those sorts of terrorist claims. And you spoke to him yourself as well. Yes, um, we were speaking on something called TeamSpeak, so you could hear it, uh, you know, it was all live, like a Skype situation. And he did sound older. I had worries that it was, he was even older than 18. But I, I felt like he was constantly trying to change Breck's ideology and all of the boys into being more anti-government, anti-religion, anti-establishment, anti-schooling, just everything. When did you find out that there had been an allegation made against Lewis that was on a national database that hadn't been flagged up after your concerns. Essex Police did tell me about this prior allegation of rapes against another 15-year-old boy, and I found that out the day after Breck was murdered. And I was extremely concerned because why weren't police records checked? You know, I called 101 because I lived in Surrey. It sent me through to Surrey Police, but Surrey Police didn't bother to check with Essex, even though I had mentioned that he was from Essex. Why are you so concerned that this report will change anything? In terms of Surrey Police, the two call handlers that we're talking about, they have left the force. If they hadn't, they would be now facing a case of misconduct. Do you think if that had gone through those channels, other police forces would take this case and your son's murder more seriously? Part of me doesn't think it's about these two people that were negligent in their, in their capacity as working for the police. If they weren't supervised, if they didn't know how or when to do PNC checks, if they didn't know how or when to recognize grooming or child sexual exploitation, what about the rest of the people that work for the force? Mm. I'm extremely concerned that it's not just an isolated incident because who was supervising them, who was managing them, who was What's training them? What's going to change that because you don't believe this report is going to change that? Um, well, I'm hoping today the, hi the report will highlight that. I'm also hoping that the coroner will open an inquest and I'm, I'm hoping for a public inquiry because I don't think it's about just two people who were negligent. I mm. think it's a bigger issue. Lauren Lafayette, thank you very much for coming in. Thank you.